Are you considering drip irrigation but want to avoid some of the most common pitfalls? Today, I'm going to cover the top five mistakes to avoid when planning or using a drip irrigation system. I'll also include some tips to help you avoid those mistakes. Avoiding these mistakes will help you see your plants happy and healthy and your irrigation system effective and efficient. Mistake one, overwatering your plants. With overhead sprinklers, people get used to seeing wet ground and water spraying or sprinkling all over the place. They get concerned when they switch drip irrigation and see only a small wet spot on top of the soil. They then increase the watering times to try to recreate the effect from the overhead watering. This causes them to overwater their plants. A small wet spot on top of the soil is usually a good sign when using drip irrigation. Remember, before the term drip really took off, it was known as precision irrigation. Drip uses water very efficiently and delivers water to the roots of the plants instead of the surrounding landscape, thus making better use of the water. The solution to avoid this? Start with a shorter watering cycle. Remember, it's always easier to add more water than it is to remove water. Also keep in mind that drip irrigation needs longer watering cycles than overhead options. Mistake two, not matching the emitters to the plant's watering needs. Different plants have different watering needs. If you have different types of plants on the same zone, customize your emitters to each one. Use higher flow rate drippers or more drippers on thirstier plants and lower flow drippers on plants that don't require as much water. Drip is easy enough to expand on that you can even add or remove components as the plants mature or go through different life cycles or after they're harvested. The solution? Consider how much water your plants will need at various stages of growth so you can plan out your emitter selection accordingly. Mistake three, exceeding the tubing capacity of your system. If you exceed the capacities of your main line, you're bound to run into trouble. Low pressure, insufficient or inconsistent watering, or even possibly damaged components from high velocities are all things that can occur if you exceed the capability of your mainline tubing. The general rules for length and flow limits are as follows. For quarter inch lines, 30 feet, 30 gallons per hour. For one half inch lines, don't exceed 200 feet or 200 gallons per hour. For a three quarter inch line, don't exceed 480 feet or 480 gallons per hour. And for one inch line, the maximums are 960 feet or 960 gallons per hour. Now, these aren't necessarily hard coded maximums but there are good general rules to follow and are the points where the friction loss curve or water velocity starts to get pretty high. High friction loss can impact consistency and too high velocity can cause damage to your components. The solution? Always keep in mind the limitations and capacities of your mainline tubing so that you stay within specification. Mistake number four, inadequate water supply flow rate. Let's say you're using 500 feet of drip tape with a half gallon per hour emitter spaced every 12 inches. This means you have a system flow rate of 250 gallons per hour. But what happens if your water source only flows at 200 gallons per hour? Some of your emitters will be starved of water and won't work as they should, if they work at all. This can lead to inconsistent watering, which can have a detrimental impact on the health of your plants. The solution? Test the flow rate of your water source and keep a tally of how many gallons per hour your emitters total up to. If the flow rate of your emitters exceeds the flow rate of your water source. You can use lower flow rate emitters or even zone the system into two or more zones. If you'd like to learn more about testing the flow rate of your water source, check out our video right here. Mistake five, too low or too high of water pressure. Drip irrigation systems typically operate at 10 to 25 PSI, depending on the emitters used. Below 10 PSI, drippers are likely to put out less water than they should. And in systems with a lot of emitters, this could cause significant discrepancies in volume per emitter across the entire system. With too much pressure, tubing can pop off your fittings, drippers may spit and spray instead of dripping, and parts and components could become damaged. The solutions? For high pressure, a simple pressure regulator can regulate downstream pressure to a preset level. Low pressure is a little more complicated. Depending on the water source, a booster pump could be used, or for gravity systems, the tank or tote could be elevated to create more pressure from gravity. If you're wondering if you need a pressure regulator, check out our video right there. Most of these mistakes can be avoided by carefully planning out your drip irrigation system. If you'd like a hand with this, check out our Getting Started with Drip Irrigation playlist right here.